Welcome to the Grad School Femme Touring Podcast. This is Dr. Yvette Martinez Vu, and I will be serving as your Femme Tour, providing you with tips and tricks and everything else you need to know to get into graduate school. For the past 10 years, I've been helping undergraduate students get into top graduate programs in their field, and I'm really excited to share this information with you too. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Yvette. I am coming to you recording from a different device. I am actually in the middle of a move right now. Um, that means I'm officially starting my transition. <laughs> I, I, I believe I mentioned it before. So moving from Santa Barbara to SoCal then in a couple of months from SoCal abroad, and while I'm in transition, I am, you know, going to be recording a few short episodes. I also have a couple of guests who I have lined up that I'm excited uh, to tell you about. And um, today, what I wanted to talk to you about is something, it's a topic that came up in conversation more than once. In fact, it came up in conversation at least three times in three different occasions. And I kept thinking to myself, oh my goodness, if this is coming up, among my circle of friends, colleagues, mentees, then it's likely coming up for my listeners as well. So what is that topic? It's a topic of setting boundaries and gaslighting in academia. Let me give you a little bit of context. The first time that it was brought up, not directly, but in conversation, was earlier this week, I had a meeting with a group of other women of color academics and all of us in some way, shape or form are transitioning out of the academy, specifically tra transitioning out of the tenure track. Some of us are trying to pursue creative writing or um, being a doula or podcasting or coaching um, or taking a break but a lot of us have similarities some of the similarities are that we're all black and brown that several of us have immigrant parents several of us uh, were were the first in our family to go to college several of us were part of the Mellon Mays undergraduate research fellowship Several of us were groomed to become professors and were not taught any options, career options outside of the professoriate. And, you know, some of us are a few years removed from getting our PhDs and others are still wrapping up their PhD program. And I recall, you know, in my program, it was, I struggled a lot with setting boundaries. I did not like disappointing people. I did not like facing any um, hostility or pushback from people. And that was really hard for me to do. And also, you know, it came up with some of the folks in, in that meeting that, you know, if they set boundaries or they try to express themselves and their full selves, their full creative selves, they're told that they're not good enough, that their writing is not academic enough. And that's the part that is very frustrating about academia, institution, institutions of higher education, and several institutions of power is that as soon as you are no longer as productive or you're not productive in the way that they need you to be, there is this pushback. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that the institution runs based on the exploitation of a lot of individuals. And what I want to remind you, because it is the start of a new academic year, some of you have already started your new semester, some of you are getting ready to start the fall quarter. This is a great time to reevaluate your boundaries, determine what they are, do they, do they need to change? 
and implement them. This is a great time to communicate your boundaries with other people. Why? Because it's really important. I think that the last year and a half, the pandemic has taught us just how short life is, how valuable and precious it is, and that it's not worth to, it's not worth it to kill yourself for your degree, for you know, your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD. And I want you to be okay with disappointing others, with, um, you know, sometimes individuals may make you feel like you're selfish or like you're difficult to work with or um, that something in you setting boundaries is triggering them in some way, shape or form. And that's not, it's not personal. It's not about you. It's about them and how they benefit from your exploitation, how they benefit from you overproducing. And at the end of the day, you have to take care of yourself. Another thing that has come up. So it came up in that meeting and then it came up again when I met with one of my femtees and then it came up, came up another time as I ran into a friend this week. She came to pick up um, some items um, that I was giving her. And it's that same conversation where as soon as you um, set a boundary, as soon as you say, I'm not going to work more than the 10 hours that I'm paid, the 20 hours that I'm paid, the 40 hours that I'm paid, um, people make you feel bad about it. Like you have to give it your all, your whole self. Um, and no, you don't. And it makes me so angry to hear about professors, students, staff who have contracted COVID, who have um, had family members or who have themselves um, experienced a flooding or who are dealing with issues of mass violence or poverty or just very living under very extreme dangerous conditions where your ability to survive to be safe um, is is unstable and then the university expects you to keep going now i had so many times when i'd be working this is pre-pandemic um, and even during the pandemic, you know, pre-pandemic working at the office feels like the world is falling apart. Horrible, horrible news of things going on. Even I remember in Santa Barbara a couple of years back, we had mudslides that killed people and there was hardly any mention of it. And we just still had to keep showing up, still had to keep doing our work. And there was no like space made for us to be able to have these tough conversations that has that always bothered me during the pandemic. Again, horrible, horrible things happening to people. And in many occasions, people close to us or sometimes to us, like sometimes it directly affecting us and our families and we have to keep going. You know, I'm hearing about professors who have students dealing with flooding, have no power and they're being asked to keep recording their lectures so that the students don't fall behind. Really? You really care about that? Instead of caring about your students and their safety? Or professors who find out that a student in their class contracted COVID and they're not allowed to tell their students about that. Really? And then if you go against what the institution says, then your job could be in jeopardy, especially for those who are contingent employees, adjunct professors, assistant professors who haven't um, secured tenure yet. That makes me angry because I, I guess I witnessed too many times that lack of humanity um, that, you know, I think if you're going to still remain in these spaces, if you have this strong conviction to get your advanced degree the way that I did, um, go ahead and do it, but don't 
kill yourself doing it. Set those boundaries. What are some examples of ways that you can set boundaries? You can set boundaries by deciding that you're not going to answer emails by a certain time. So after 5 p.m., you're not going to answer emails. Or maybe you decide you're only going to answer emails during two windows of time during the day, maybe in the morning and before you clock out at the end of the day. Or maybe um, you take Sundays off. Or maybe, like I said earlier, you don't work more than what you're getting paid for. You have a TA ship, it's 20 hours a week. You don't work, you count your time, don't work more than 20 hours, and you do what you have to do to not go over those 20 hours. It's just not worth your health. As someone who developed a chronic illness in graduate school, I worked myself to the point where I got, I made myself sick. I don't want that to happen to you. I do not regret it in the sense that I remain grateful that I am who I am and that my experiences have allowed me to have this deep sense of empathy for other people and their experiences. I still think that, you know, if you can learn from me and my experiences, then go ahead and learn a little sooner to take care of yourself, to prioritize yourself, to put yourself first, because if you don't do it, no freaking institution is going to do it for you. No supervisor is going to do it for you. No advisor is going to do it for you. Only you can take care of yourself. And so right now, as we're starting this, this new academic year, what I wish for you is that you can have very specific dreams and goals and intentions and that you follow through with them that you take care of yourself, that you make space and time, not just for the work, but space and time for rest, space and time for joy. And so if I can assign a little homework for you, it's really to reflect on your boundaries right now, reflect on your values and figure out what small change can you make to help you get closer to that and also how can you communicate them? Because it's not just about figuring out what your boundaries are and then practicing them. It's also about communicating them with other people. Even if you might disappoint some people, we have to learn to be okay with having tough, difficult conversations. It might be awkward and uncomfortable, but sit with that discomfort. The more you have these uncomfortable conversations and the more you learn to advocate yourself for yourself the better off you'll be so yeah figure out your boundaries communicate them you don't want to be the person who says i'm not going to answer emails after this hour and then someone doesn't know and this and something urgent happens and there's a communication mishap you know what i mean like just to avoid any major issues communicate those boundaries and and be firm with them because no one's going to believe you if you say you have certain boundaries and then you don't follow through with them. And that's actually another reason why I encourage you to also communicate your boundaries, say it out loud to as many people as possible, because the more you communicate them, the more you have to hold yourself accountable to keeping them. And the more you keep them, the more you're taking care of yourself. So I hope you found this helpful and I uh, will talk to you all next time. Thanks so much for joining me in the Grad School Fem Touring Podcast. If you liked what you heard, please rate this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere you tune in. You can also support the podcast by donating to my Patreon page, Anger page, or Venmo account, which is at Grad School Fem Touring. If you have questions or episode topics, you can contact me by sending me a DM on Instagram, sending me an email to gradschoolfemtouring at gmail.com, sending me a voice message on Anchor, or sending me a message via my personal website at yvettemartinezvu.com. Until next time. <laughs>